Shalom. Giving all praises to the Heavenly Father, Yahweh, Bahasham, Yahweh Shai, Bahasham, Rachakurash. Double honors to the apostles, the bishops, and the elders at Great Millstone who rule well. Peace and salutations as always to the elect. All right, you brothers and you sisters who are coming back to the obedience. All right, of the Most High God, Yahweh, through the sacrifice made by his only begotten son, Hamashiach Yahweh Shai, who the world ignorantly calls Jesus Christ. He is our mediator, all right, our high priest, and our way back to the Father in these latter days via the Holy Spirit, Rachakwadash, that has been sent as a form of comfort, all right, for us as we walk in these dark times, as we're in the very, very end of Esau's world, okay? We have awakened, you know, with a testimony that ultimately identifies him and ultimately undermines and declares that everything that he has stated to be true is a lie. And when you look at Esau Edom, everything that he's gotten up to this point has been ultimately gotten, you know, by the sword, as we'll show you, all right, and by lying, all right, this beast system is rooted in lies, okay, America itself was established, all right, um, upon very, very wicked principles, and now we live in a world dominated by evil, okay, to where there's no standard of what uh, right and wrong is, okay, you're, you're not awarded for doing good things, you're you're rewarded for doing evil. Okay, we're just living in a complete chaotic environment that that's very toxic. And now that we've awakened through the Holy Spirit, we can see the danger. All right, that this man rulership, you know, you know, uh, presents to us as Israelites, but not only to us, but to the earth itself. The earth is in dire, you know, need of a new rulership in order to be restored. And this is what. You know, the remnant, you know, starting with the men of the Lord, you know, have been set up to do. This is why we were born, you know, in the grand scheme of things, you know, in the, this movie the Lord wrote, you know, his word. You know, there's a remnant chosen, you know, to stand stiffly for the names of Yahweh and Yahweh Shai. All right. And tell the truth of the matter. OK. And in a court case. All right. A true testimony is vital to a judgment and we've been given that testimony and we're living in a time where it's evident and clear okay that this man is the wicked because he's been identified via the holy scriptures okay and it's evident that we're at the end of his reign we're at the end of his world and everything that you're seeing happening um with all of this stuff with the trump you know, whether it be, the, you know, the small hats and the anti-SIM. Okay, everything that they're doing are all psychological, you know, uh, warfare operations to wage war on the minds, but to ultimately justify coming down, okay, and rooting people who have particular talking points out of the earth by law. See? And as you can see here, which I'm not going to go too far into this, uh, this video um, which I screenshot at this here but watch what the Trump rally shooter is believed to have posted on social media according to the FBI now if you look at how this devil has been operating all right domestic terrorism linked to social media talking points all right is uh, one of the uh, many uh, <clears throat> one of the many angles that he's going to use, you know, to uh, wage war, all right, and to implement his, uh, you know, draconian measures. Now, when you look at social media, all right, what sprung up, all right, on social media, because you have to understand YouTube will be considered social media. You see, but now that, you know, this truth is spread, you know, everywhere you look, all right, you're seeing the Hebrew Israelites everywhere. You know, the talking point of, you know, the things that are exposing Esau, Edom, the talking point that we're the true biblical Israelites. 
and all of these various different things. So it would only make sense, all right, that these particular psychological operations that they're, you know, pushing down the throats of people are going to involve, okay, people who do things based on what they post on social media. And, you know, when you look at Nero, you know, back in uh, the ancient Roman Empire, okay, this is why we liken Trump to Nero. We call, you know, Trump Nero. And when you look at, you know, particulars of their life, you know, it, it makes sense that Trump is Nero, you know, back in the reincarnation. But pretty much what Nero was able to do, I'll get into the scriptures. Uh, he was, he was uh, pretty much... He, he he had a uh, particular region of Rome burned down where a temp where a uh, Colosseum was okay that was dedicated to the god Jupiter and uh, he blamed the Jews you see what I'm saying but when you go into his angle and how he did it he basically said when you look at the talking point you know of these Israelites which the church of Yahweh Shai had become a threat you know, in the sense that they were gathering followers, miracles were being performed. <laughs> you know, everywhere you look, you will see followers of Yahweh Shai preaching the word. The same thing that you see happening now. So what he did is he took particular talking points of their gospel as, you know, they would go into the prophecies, you know, uh, of what's coming to, to Babylon. Although it wasn't going to happen in that day, it was something that they would go into. They would go into the, the, the law, the prophets, you know. They would, they would go into all of those things. And what Nero did is he said, basically, when you when you listen to these, you know, these these Israelites, pretty much they're talking about fire, you know, being uh, being uh, uh, sent on Rome. Right now, we know and understand that the Rome that the fire is going to devour is ultimately the revival of Rome. And the uh, sense that America, which is Babylon the Great, is an extension of the ancient Roman Empire, right? So what they did was they took particular talking points of the Jews, right? And that fire is going to come by nuclear destruction and by fire from the chariots. Okay. All right. And as you can see, I have it pulled up here. In just a little history. Nero, who came from a wealthy family, just like Donald Trump. <laughs> um, <clears throat> now, when you look at the situation, you know, Trump being, you know, so-called, you know, they tried to assassinate him, whatever. Either way it goes, they can use this situation, all right, as a means to say people, all right, that are becoming domestic terrorists are being trained up with their mindset from online talking points. Remember the scriptures say, all right, that the uh, the uh, serpent was more subtile than many of the beasts of the field. So this man is getting ready to come with many angles. And if you're not rooted, Okay, you're going to get caught out there. It says, Nero himself blamed the fire on an obscure, all right, new, all right, because prior to Yahweh Shai coming on the scene, all you knew was, you know, the scribes, the Pharisees, the Essenes, the, uh, the uh, Zealots, Sadducees, you know, these were the different, you know, Jews, primarily Judah, Benjamin, and Levi, who had, you know, stuck to the traditions, these particular, you know, small sanctuaries of Jews, all right, in the Roman Empire, the fourth beast. But when Yahweh Shai came on the scene, he formed a camp that they call followers of the Mashiach. They were not called Christians until Acts the 11th chapter where they were in Antioch and they were called Chris Christians as a derogatory term. All right, but either way it goes, the followers of Yahweh Shai, Nero himself blamed the fire on an obscure new, all right, sect of the Jews, religious sect called the Christians, whom he indiscriminately and mercilessly crucified. All right. During the gladiator matches, he would feed followers of Yahweh shot and lions and often lit his garden parties with the burning carcasses of, you know, so-called Christian torches. And you can look up more of that. But when we look at what's happening, when we look at being formulated, Okay, this devil is getting ready to come down with great wrath because ultimately he has been he's been caught. Thou has been found, that has been caught because thou are striven against the Lord. Now let's get that. Let's get that in the uh in the scriptures. Uh thou are found and caught. All 
All right, this is the book of Jeremiah 50 and 24. And see, the, the followers of Yahweh Shai were going into these prophecies, but it was a future prophecy to what was to come, all right, to the revival of Rome. You see, but when you when you go into Nero and his, his his how he played it, he went into particular talking points of you know the the prophets, you know the disciples that were going out and saying, here it is, they're always talking about fire is coming. Well, here it is, they burned down this you know uh, temple dedicated to an idol that they speak against, because to speak against the idols of Rome, you know, during the Roman Empire was a very very was an act of treason. To declare another king, you know, they were saying Yahweh Shai was the king, that you were at the threat of imminent death. And see, this word that we're we're preaching right now, all right, in the coming days, all right, we're gonna be at the point of imminent that the threat of imminent death based upon our belief. This is why they're formulating AI and all of these, you know, they're weaponizing the world, okay, and everything that they are doing is a an assault against righteousness. It's preparing to fight against the son of Yahweh Shai, of the son of the Most High, who is Yahweh Shai. Okay, so that they can uh, fully establish their order. They can't establish their order with people like us on the planet Earth <laughs> in our talking point, ro roaming free. Okay? And they've done all that they can do to stop it, and it hasn't worked. We've confounded all of their, their, their scholars, right? And the truth is only growing, right? Even they're, they're, they're hiring other Israelites to try to join forces with them to, to frustrate and cause all of this confusion. All of that is happening right before our face, right? It says, I have laid a snare for thee, and thou art also taken, O Babylon, and thou was not aware. Thou art found <laughs> and also caught because thou hast striven against the Lord. So you, you got found out. And the scripture said in the latter days that Esau will be made bare. So all of these things we see happening, right? Right? This is Jeremiah 49 and 10. But I have made Esau bear. I have uncovered his secret places. He shall not be able to hide himself. And then see, this is where we are. This is why he's doing everything in his power to divert the mind through these psychological operations. All right. From the reality of what's going on. And the reality of what's going on is that we're at the end of Esau's world. And he's the, 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 they're the, these are the biblical Edomites who are running the earth. And the truth of the Bible points to that. See, this is why they had to, you know, bring out all of this confusion in the form of Christianity, all of these off religions to bring as much confusion as he could so that the truth would never be found out. But as it states in the book of, all right, our forefather Esdras, let's get second Esdras. Okay. Chapter six. <laughs> and 27. For evil shall be put out and deceit shall be quenched. Deceit has been quenched as the Lord said and we'll get it. You know, uh, he's going to uh, destroy the covering cast over all nations and the veil that has been spread upon all of the people in the sense that he's been able to, you know, lie about every goddamn thing and these lies have ran around the planet earth as the truth of the matter and look what it's led to it's led to a uh a, a, a earth void of any fear or respect or reverence for what's true see so this is what, why we're we are the biggest threat to the nwo so evil shall be put out and deceit shall be quenched as for faith it shall flourish corruption shall be overcome and the truth which have been so long without fruit shall be declared and this is where we are so what does this mean in the grand scheme of things as we see these devils getting ready to uh do that uh setting up all kind of plays and all kind of angles where they can go, uh, uh, go to what and what is their goal let's get it real quick in the book of Psalms 37. Let's get that real quick. <clears throat> Psalms 37 and 14 says, The wicked have drawn out the sword and have bent their bow to cast down the poor and needy and to slay such as be of upright conversation, man. And when you deal with upright conversation, all right, upright 
all right, means righteous, okay, upstanding, agreeable with the, the uh, moral concept that Yahweh by Hashem Yahweh Shai, okay, uh, uh, deals with, you know, the laws, order, which this earth has been so far gone in disorder that for people to hear the truth, it's annoying unto them, it's offensive. He's been able to set up a wicked system in the planet earth that is rooted in evil and lies to the point to where what's true all right even if you if, if you're dealing with how many genders there are right <laughs> that that's a i mean why why are these even arguments that are happening in the planet why why would these things even be questioned well we living in a world where a moth truth the word math all right like you we go to school and you you know you do you, you have what is called math right that comes that goes back to the hebrew word a moth, which means truth. And the simplest way to put it is one plus one will always be one. All right. And you deal with all of those equations and, you know, uh, you know, uh, uh, different shapes and the, the degrees and all of that. It, it always aligns up. It, 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 it's true. It's always true. <laughs> right. That's the best way to describe it. Some people, are, you know, more into it. And a lot of that stuff Esau overcomplicates with math. But that is a true science. That is a, you know, uh, when, when you deal with math, a moth, it, it just means truth, right? The truth of the matter. One plus one will always, all right, be two. Okay. There will always be male and female point blank period. That is a moth. Well, we're living in a world where a moth, okay, is, is, is being threatened, being challenged and where, where, where people have no regard for it. The Hebrew word for upright is yashar. Yashar, all right. It means what? Upright, correct. See, pleasing, straightforward, and see the truth is straightforward. Esau's lies lead to what is known as gray areas, and when you have a gray area and not a definite, it allows people to do as they will, and that's the that's the uh, serpent's philosophy. All right, the philosophy of do as thou wilt. Okay which the seed of the, the, the serpent, all right, the, the family line of Cain, right, they forwarded that in the planet Earth in their day, okay? Uh, the many nations forwarded, man, but the, 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 the greatest forwarding of and rebellion against the Heavenly Father will be led by the biblical Edomites and what is known as Babylon the Great. And what does Babel mean? It's confusion. So Yashar means to be level, to be straight, to be pleasing, Okay, male and female, child comes out. That's pleasing to the Lord. Okay, particular things within the ecosystem you don't eat, particular things within the ecosystem you can't eat. That's pleasing to the Lord to create paradise on earth. Create particular things in the water you shouldn't eat. All right, so that the waters be clean and that we have a safe earth. See, the, the law, statutes, and commandments being implemented on earth it will benefit all people. It's just that there'll be an order to things and people don't want to deal with order. The order to things is that the Heavenly Father's children, the biblical Israelites, will be at the forefront of laying that law of what the standard of right is and wrong is in the planet Earth. That's the throne of David. And it's going to be uh, 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 upright. It's going to be correct. Okay? That which is right. Root word. Okay? To be right, to be straight, to be level, upright, lawful smooth pleasing okay direct lead straight alone okay see these philosophies in the planet earth are leading people off the path and 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 and, and in their eyes it's it's good it's peace but you're diseased you're sick the, the water you're drinking ain't is all the uh, the messed up everything that was made for good is now destroying you okay flour sugar <laughs> Uh, honey, he's weaponized all of these things against the people, man. Iron. He's weaponized, all right, uh, uh, the, the earth against the people. When the earth was made for the people to forward themselves, man, but it just needed a right order. It needed a, 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 a particular re uh, leadership. And under who the world ignorantly calls Jesus Christ, the leadership will be the throne of David. So, the, the powers that be, right, 
You can see what they're doing if you're watching everything with a spiritual eye. Psalms 37 and 14, the wicked have drawn out the sword and have bent their bow to cast down the poor and needy. And who's the poor and needy on earth? You Israelites. Okay. <laughs> it says, and to slay as such as be of upright conversation. So upright conversation is a threat to the NWO. So when you look at this situation here, all right, they're, they're getting ready to make their move, all right, on linking domestic terrorism, okay, to social media uh, postings and what you're saying on social media. And, you know, no matter how much we try to clean it up, you know, they got clips, you know, from Israelites saying some crazy stuff. Now, we know as Israelites that our doctrine has nothing to do with going out and fighting. I mean, look at all of the Hebrew Israelite camps set up. How many have us, have uh, you know, even the ones we don't agree with, how many of them have went out and actually, you know, uh, uh, put people to death, you know, beat the shit out of people? Now, things happen amongst, you know, uh, particular camps. There may be fights that break out. You may have some weirdo who goes off and do something crazy. But overall, the Hebrew Israelites have not, all right, used their numbers to go and inflict harm and danger to the uh, American all right, and the systems across the world. We just stand out there on the street corner. We, we read our Bibles. It's annoying to people, but that's how the Heavenly Father wanted it to be. Okay? But the number one domestic terrorist that the Heavenly Father has his eyes on is Esau. Meanwhile, he's getting ready to try to use his legislation and witchcraft and mind fuckery to basically put that stigma on you Israelites. Now, let's get that in the scriptures, right? Revelation chapter 12 and 17 says, and the dragon was wroth with the woman. He was pissed off, angry. Okay. Now you tell a Christian to break this down. They're not going to be able to break this down. Okay. Who's the dragon? The dragon in this chapter represents Rome okay the ancient Western Roman Empire okay how do we know that well when you go up in this chapter okay and when you deal with this beast system all right Rome is what gave it its uh, uh, power and authority okay let's get that uh, in Revelation 13. And two, it says, and I saw the beast, which in the beast, which I saw was like unto a leopard. All right. And his feet were as the feet of a bear. The leopard represents the Greeks. This whole beast system started with the Greeks. OK. And the, as a, the mouth as a lion, speaking of the British, because out of the British. All right. The 13 colonies were established which that was a forwarding of the ancient Roman Empire, but it, but it established what is known as the, uh, what is that? The uh, 13 United, uh, the 13 colonies, which eventually became the United States. Okay, which would be the final, all right, of the uh, beast that ultimately would be established. All right, and the, the, the policies of Rome would all be fulfilled and brought back into the earth, starting at the Renaissance all the way up to the British who established the American, you know, colonies, you know, it says, and the dragon gave him his power and his seat and great authority. So the dragon is Rome. Rome, yeah, the Greeks were powerful, but Rome, okay, is what gave them their, their, their uh, great power and authority. And that's the system that they're forwarding. Although it has remnants of Greco, the Greek culture is really the Roman Empire, all right, which you just saw the Olympics. Okay, what were they? What, what did you see in that? You saw all form of blasphemy, right? You saw wickedness. You saw left handed satanic rituals being performed right in front of your face. You saw a mockery of our Lord. You saw the confusion that they want for this new world. This is the confusion that they're saying this is true, this is the, the, the way of life. Not your order, not your God, not your two genders, not your truth, right? 
we, we're seeing that they're openly becoming more and more disrespectful and proud and bold in their wickedness. All right. And it all has it has everything to do with the Greco Roman Empire. You see. <laughs> Esau and, and, and like, like you see here, let's remember who we are and where we come from, our identity, our culture and our history. It all goes back to Rome. See, and they know that it's just that now you don't hear them really too much boasting and talking about the, the, the Greeks and the Romans. You don't hear the West boasting in that because we've now identified that the Greeks and the Romans were Edomites. So now you don't see too many Edomites. All right. Uh, uh, you know, standing bold and proud for, for Rome. You see, but but clearly. The Greco-Roman infrastructure represents rebellion against the truth, anti-Messiah, that, that spirit. And Rome is what gave him his great authority. And that's from the time of the Renaissance, after that Western Roman Empire fell, till now, they've established that image back into the earth, which we'll get into the image of the beast, all right, in another video, okay? So when, when you go to Revelation, the 12th chapter, the red dragon, now, mind you, when we're let's read Revelation 12 and 17 again. It says, and the dragon was wroth with the woman. I mean, he was pissed off. All right. Who's the woman? All right. The Israelites. Let's get Jeremiah 6 and 2. All right. Israel is known as the wife, the bride of the heavenly father. All right. But she was supposed to be a faithful wife. All right. That her ultimately rebelled, but a remnant would be that faithful that will come back in sincerity. This is the book of Jeremiah 6, okay? And two, I have likened the daughter of Zion to a comely and delicate woman, all right? He's, there's various scriptures where, all right, the, the Lord says, I am married unto thee, all right? Jeremiah 3 and 14, turn, O backsliding children, because Israel constantly goes off, except the Lord, for I am married unto you, see, and I will take you one of a city and two of a family, and I will bring you into Zion. So the, the, the woman in this, in this chapter represents the elect, because that is that faithful bride who's been espoused to the heavenly father. Okay, to be ultimately brought into the new covenant, promised to. This is that purchased possession. All right, that church, that remnant. Revelation 12 and 17, and the dragon was wroth with the woman and went to make war with the remnant. Now, we're always talking about the remnant of her seed, which shall keep the commandments of the Most High and shall have the testimony of Yahweh Shah. So if you're keeping the commandments of the Heavenly Father, okay, uh, you, you, um, or, or, you know, have a testimony that deals with the true Messiah of the Bible, that by default means you're against this world. See? And Esau Edom, 144, call knows very well who we are and what we represent. Remember, they know that they're Edomites and that we're Jacob. All right? We're Israelites. Jacob's name was changed to Israel. They know that. The elites know these things. See, the, the, the common people don't know these things, but see, the elites of Yasha Allah now know these things. See, they were able to hide the fact that we were Israelites from the world with the power and with the lies and with the deception. I'm talking about they've put trillions of dollars into lying about who we are and who they, who they are. See, and it says here, the, the, the dragon was wroth with the woman and went to make war with the remnant of her seed which keep the commandments of the Most High, have the testimony of Yahweh Shai. So the dragon that this is talking about, this is how we know this is talking about Rome, is when you deal in this chapter, Revelation 12 and 3, and there appeared another wonder in heaven. This is a vision that John the Revelator is seeing. But remember, these things are symbolic. These visions are, and what he saw, though it used term like beast, seven heads, it's all symbolic of a rulership that's associated with the biblical Edomites. And specifically right here. And I, there appeared another wonder in heaven and behold, a great red dragon having seven heads and ten horns 
and seven crowns upon his head. This is his beast system. Now, as you can see, it said red, a red dragon. All right, and his tail drew down, and the, and the, the seven heads represent his the 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 uh, his kingdoms within this beast system that will rule in the earth. The ten horns represent the vassals or the subordinate states, you know, that ultimately would join alliances with them to make them a beast system, a military might. No matter where you are, you can get rolled on, all right, because they have all of these different subordinate countries that have aligned themselves with Rome to make it a powerhouse, okay? The EU today is the Ten Horns. Now, it says, in his tail, drew down the third parts of the stars of heaven, and did cast him to the earth, which is Judah, Benjamin, and Levi, who were in, all right, with Daniel 7 chapter calls the fourth beast. They were in the Roman captivity. Judah, Benjamin, and Levi were cast down to the earth because remember the northern kingdom had already, at the time of the Assyrian Empire, came to the Americas, right? But the third, Judah, Benjamin, and Levi, okay, the same ones that rebuilt the temple, the descendants of them, were in the Roman captivity, hoping to be saved, trying to get around being taxed, okay? They were uh, vassals to the Roman Empire. They they ultimately, all right, the leadership sold out and, and gave in to the beast. It says, in his tail drew down the third part of the stars of heaven and did cast into the earth. And the dragon stood before the woman, which was ready to be delivered for to devour her child as soon as it was born. And if you know anything about history, this is when you go into the scriptures, this is talking about Herod, the great, who was an Amalekite, an Edomite, all right, who got power, all right, through the Roman Empire, okay, to reign over the region of Jerusalem, Judea. That's why they called him the so-called king of the Jews. And see, those very same people are today, all right, just as they were, Herod was trying to devour Okay, Yahweh Shai. Okay, because ultimately he understood he he's an Edomite. He's on a level. He comes from uh, you know Herod came from a high level. These weren't no low level Edomites, right? So when you read the story, he saw the chariot, and pretty much he knew the Messiah was going to be born, and he heard the prophets. He 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 was listening to the you know Esau Edom was always watching you Israelites. Herod was very closely paying attention to what they were talking about as concerning Yahweh Shai being born. This is the same thing is happening today with a guy like Vocab Malone. Why do you think they're they're they're, they're listening to us so heavily? All right, and, and trying to set us up and trap us in our words because ultimately they know what we represent and what do we represent? Why did Herod want so eagerly to put Yahweh Shai to death? Because this child, as you read in verse five, brought and she brought forth the man child who was to rule all nations with a rod of iron. And her child was caught up to the most high in his throne. And he grew up, you know, eventually Herod wasn't able to put him to death. He grew up and fulfilled the sacrifice. And eventually he wrote, he rose from the dead and he went back to the father. That disarmed the devil. That act right there means Esau ain't going to win. So he was trying to put Yahweh Shai to death based upon his importance to the throne of Israel being established again in the planet Earth and ruling over his ass. Because it's written in the blessing that Jacob will rule over his brethren. It's already written. That's a part of the blessing that Jacob is going to get is to uh, let's get it in uh, Genesis 27. All right. Let's listen to what, what Jacob's blessing really entails, right? Revelation 27, we all over the place, but hey, it is what it is. Revelation 27. Let's see here. All right, Genesis 27. In 28, therefore, God give thee the dew of heaven and the fatness of the earth and plenty of corn and wine. This is Jacob's blessing. 
this is what we're going to have. You know, right now, Esau has the fatness of the earth, but he has it, <clears throat> and it's a temporal rulership. Both Jacob and Esau were blessed with rulership of the earth, all right? It says, let people serve. This is what was told to Jacob. This is his blessing, okay, which is fulfilled in the kingdom of heaven. The the the. This is what the Israelites should be fighting for, right? <laughs> but look what it entails. Let people serve thee and nations bow down to thee and be Lord over thy brethren. So you're going to be Lord. You're going to be masters over your brothers. Who's his brother? Who's Jacob's brother? Esau. See? Let people, all right, serve thee, all of the other nations, and nations bow down unto thee, just like they did when King David established the throne of David. Okay, the nations bowed to him. When they saw him, they were they, they were in order. They had reverence for him. They, they had fear towards the Israelites. And Solomon forwarded that kingdom, all right, that, that government, for 40 years Solomon forwarded that for 40 years that's the kingdom that Israel any true believer of these scriptures you Israelites that's what you should be calling for that type of, of order being reestablished under who the world ignorantly calls Jesus Christ but they've misconstrued your mind on what heaven is and what you know and all of these various different things that you can't fathom that the kingdom of heaven is going to be played out on earth all right, <laughs> right here. We you think we'll just float around in the sky forever? No, this earth needs to be set in order. And what that takes is this, and let people serve thee and nations bow down to thee. Be Lord over thy brethren and let thy mother's sons bow to thee. Curse be everyone that curseth you and blessed be he that blesseth thee. All right, and again, when we're set up in a kingdom, if you do, if you heathen do what's right, they will be blessed, but they will never be in line with the rank and order of the Israelites. They won't be in a second covenant. All right. But a righteous government ruling will lead to a blessed earth. And you're going to, you heathen are going to have to be obedient to that, that, that rulership. Now let's go back here. So in revelation 12, Herod, okay, Herod, and you can find that uh, that account in Matthew, the second chapter, if you want to read it. Okay. As you can see here, Matthew two and three, when Herod, the king had heard these things, he was troubled in all Jerusalem with him. And he gathered the, all the chief priests and scribes. All right. And the, and the people together, and he demanded of them. All right. Where Yahweh should be born. And they said unto him, Bethlehem of Judea, for it is written by the prophet in the book of uh, Micah. So, and this is what the prophecy says. And thou, Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, are not the least among the princes of Judah. For out of thee shall come a governor that shall rule my people. And see, here it is. Herod is living at the time, right, <laughs> where that child is being born. So his goal, hit, hit, you know, as you, as, as you keep reading the story, he was like, tell me where the Messiah is so I can, you know, so I can bless him. But really, he wanted to put him to death. And all of this happened in the Roman Empire. That's why it says, and the, the dragon was red. Okay? And these were Edomites. Herod came from, his father was named uh, uh, Antipater the Idumean. Antipater was an Edomite. See, the covering cast over all of these nations, right? Let's get that. Isaiah 26. Isaiah 26. All right. All right. Isaiah 25 and 7. And he will destroy in this mountain the face of the covering cast over all people and the veil that is spread over all nations, which goes into what? Okay. Uh, the, the lies that have been told. The confusion. See? So when you look at who the nations are, right? And how they're identified in the earth right now, how they're identified, black, white, all of these political terms that confuse people, Chinese. See, what we, the Israelites, have identified, those of us who are teaching this thing the right way, okay, is that the people who are ruling this earth, they're not white, all right? They're, 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 they're not European. They're not, you know, this, they're not that. 
They're Edomites. You're the Edomites, the biblical Edomites, all right, which are ruling here in the earth in these latter days, right? So that red dragon, as you can see, this red dragon, look up the word red in the Greek. We've never done that. Pyros, having, all right, the color of fire, <laughs> red. See, the color of fire. Then the root word, 4442, call Hello Yahweh fire. See? Fire. So th that, that, that color is associated with fire. All right, red. Okay? Now, this same red dragon in the latter days, as we're telling you, Rome has been revived into the planet Earth. Revelation 12 and 17. And the dragon, what dragon? The red dragon, but it's just the revival of that red dragon. Was wroth with the woman, just like he was mad at the time that Yahweh Shai was going to be born. So he could put him to death because he understood what Yahweh Shai represented. So how much us? And went to make war with the remnant of her seed, which keep the commandments of the Most High and have the testimony of Yahweh Shai. Okay, so 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 ultimately, this is what we're up against. This is where we are. You see now red in the scriptures, right? When you deal with it, we know when you go to the book of Genesis, the 25th chapter. All right, red is how Esau was described. All right, Genesis, the 25th chapter. All right. And when you when you deal with, you know, Jacob and Esau, they were even struggling in the womb. You know, they were at odds in the womb. OK, so that's how the Heavenly Father set it up to be. And we've been at odds until this day. Even when you look at I was reading this. Uh, see if I can pull this article up. Yeah, the, the, I was reading this. A brother has sent this the devil's punch bowl. All right. Which happened in Natchez, Mississippi, which is where my roots happened to go back. So I might have been back there. You know, but it was basically a, a a large concentration camp where they just tortured Jake, burned him alive, did all kind of wickedness, man. OK, it says one gruesome camp. And this is just one of many. In particular, was located in Natchez, Mississippi. The Devil's Punch Bowl is a place located in Natchez where during the Civil War authorities forced tens of thousands of free slaves to live in these American death camps. OK, uh, the, the Union Army did not allow them to remove the bodies from the camp. They just gave them shovels and said bury them where they drop. And, and this this is a history that they try to wipe this stuff out. That whole critical race theory thing. They're trying to, you know. Uh, wipe this this history out, but they were torturing Jake. All right. In many concentrations, this is just one. OK, which fulfills our, our curse. But ultimately, a lot of our people have questions of why. Why is there so much friction between the so-called white man and, and the tribes? The answer is in the scriptures. Ultimately, the seed of the serpent. All right. Will be ultimately in enmity with the seed of the woman. All right. But you have to have a true teacher of the Bible to break, break down these things and their importance in prophecy and where we are today. Because believe you me, these Edomites are getting ready to wage war on you Israelites. And a lot of you are going to be caught out there bad and good for you niggas, man. Because you used your grace period to ultimately highlight your own flesh and be an asshole and not uh, uh, stick to the simplicity in your how shy. Okay, and, and, and pretty much you're, you're, a lot of you are going to be used to help him persecute the camps and the, the true Israelites that have the, the true intent. But anyway, when Esau was born, okay, and it says the first came out red, hairy like a garment, and they called his name Esau, all right? And it, it was the garments that they used to dye red. He didn't have hair all over him when he came out, but he was described as a hairy man as he grew up, okay? But red, let's get that 
in the uh, A Da Wamya. All right. It says red. All right. Then it says ruddy. All right. Or Esau as an infant. Reddish. Okay. Who are the red people of the planet Earth? The biblical Edomites. You see? This is them. Okay? So the first came out red all over. All right? Like a hairy garment. And they called his name Esau. So Esau is associated with red in the Holy Scriptures, man. Okay? And red, when you get the book of Isaiah... The first chapter in the 18th verse. Isaiah 1 and 18. Come now and let us reason together. Though your sins be as scarlet, they shall be as white as snow. All right. And scarlet is a derivative of red. Okay. Let's look up scarlet. See what it says here. When you look up scarlet. So sins are associated with scarlet. Now, who's being revealed in these latter days? The man of sin. All right. Sh Shania is the Hebrew word scarlet crimson, which is ultimately a derivative of red. OK. It's dye that they use scarlet crimson. Let's see here. There you go. So there's basically a shade of red. Okay, and when you go into the scriptures, okay, it deals with a scarlet colored beast, right? Scarlet. Yep, Revelation 17 and 4, and the woman was arrayed in purple and scarlet color and decked with gold and precious silver, okay? Right, let's read it here. Revelation 17 and 3. So he carried me away in the spirit into the wilderness, and I saw a woman sit up on a scarlet colored beast. Okay, a woman sit up on a scarlet colored beast. Okay, which this is symbolizing the beast system that will be in rulership, which would forward blasphemy of Yahweh Bashmi Al Shai into the earth, full of the names of blasphemy, having seven heads and ten horns. The same way that red dragon was described in Revelation, the uh, 12th chapter, seven heads and ten horns, which symbolize Rome. OK, well, John, the revelator is seeing a vision of the entire beast system up until its end in this chapter. But it's described as a scarlet colored beast. OK, that's one way we know that the biblical Edomites run this this current system we live in. This beast system is ran by the red people of the Bible, the biblical Edomites. But we live in a time now where Edomites can come even looking so-called black. Okay? And the woman was arrayed in purple and scarlet color and decked with gold and precious stones, having a golden cup in her hand full of abomination and the filthiness of her fornication. Okay? And when you go to Jeremiah 51, right? Let's get Jeremiah... Okay, Jeremiah 51 and 7. Babylon had been a golden cup in the Lord's hand that had made all the earth drunk and the nations have drunken over wine. Therefore, the nations are mad. Babylon is suddenly fallen and destroyed. How for her? Take balm for her pain. If so, she may be healed. So this place ain't going to be healed. But this place has been used as the Heavenly Father as a tool to forward blasphemy into the planet Earth. And at the forefront of that are the red people of the Bible, the biblical Edomites. And see, they have been able to use, okay, witchcraft, pseudoscience to hide, all right, the reality of who they were. Because when you deal with the term white, let's get that, okay, which they put on themselves around the 15, 1600s, okay, there was, there was not a, a, a race called white people before that time, okay? They brought in these terms to, to, to forward confusion all right, and to, to uh, start to uh, separate themselves as the dominant people of the planet Earth from the rest of the people. But it says via color, which is witchcraft. 
Okay, you can make yourself a chosen people, all right, by simply, all right, undermining the reality of who nations are according to the Bible. We don't know people as Moabites in, 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 in this world. Nobody's talking about who the Edomites are in this world. Now they are because the Israelites are here. There's only been one people to walk around and say they have a biblical nationality, and that's been the small hats. You see? Everybody else is a color, or named after a, a metal name, you know, like, like what's going on here? <laughs> the color white at its most, is, is uh, let's see here, white, all right? Because when you deal with these devils, they deal with color, you know, uh, uh, color uh, psychology. It's, in, it's written in the system of Edomite supremacy. They've studied the mind to know how to use color psychology. And when you look at how this man has been able to get away with everything that he gets away with, all right, a lot of it has to do with this color crap that he's pushed out there. And he's put the term white on himself. All right, the color white is a color at its most, all right, white is purity, innocence, wholesome, and complete, right? <laughs> the color white is color at its most complete and pure and color of perfection. So they were able to put the the uh, the term white, the color in color psychology, purity. All right. White is the color of new beginnings, of wiping the slate clean. All right. So to speak, yada, yada, yada is not stimulated. So basically, uh, they put the term white on themselves. All right. And with that witchcraft, They've been able to hide, all right, from this stigma, which is what? The man of sin, red, all right, because they're the red people. Red represents fire, danger. Red can have negative psychological associations, including dang danger, anger, and aggression. Now, when you look at this term beast in the scriptures, we were just reading uh, uh, Revelation, what, 17? All right, a scarlet colored beast. This word beast describes this devil in a, in, a, in a perfect manner. Therion, okay, metaphorically a brutal, bestial, and savage, ferocious man. A bestial man. That, that beast man is Esau Edom. <laughs> the red people of the planet Earth, right? All right. The man of sin. In Jeremiah 1 and 18, then didn't, didn't, uh, didn't we see that it said your sins are as crimson because crimson red represents what? Danger, bad, aggression, anger, sin. That's why you have a stop sign colored red. It means stop. If you don't stop here, you can be in danger. See, danger. Red is often used to warn people of danger. All right. And we're, we're living in dangerous times such as stop signs, sirens, and fire engines. And it could also be used, all right, in non-literal ways, like the phrase, in the red, describe financial loss as a red flag to indicate something is wrong. One study found that people were faster to classify words and symbols associated with danger when they were shown in the red, okay? Compared to green or gray. Anger, red is also associated with anger and people who are angry and are sometimes uh, said to see red. Okay? Red and anger. See? Aggression. Red is also associated with, with aggression and, and war. Now, when you go into the scriptures, let's get the book of Revelation, the sixth chapter. So he's been able to put the term white on himself which means he's pure. When you look at him, you don't really see any danger. You don't see any harm. You leave your children with him. You believe him. You trust him. But in the grand scheme of things, the, the, the guy's the red. He's really the red man who you should really be, uh, uh, as the scriptures say, never trust in him. Revelation chapter 6 and 4. And there went out another horse that was red. And power was given him that set thereon to take peace from the earth and that they should kill one another. And there was given unto him a great sword. 
Now, when you look at Esau's blessing in the book of Genesis, the 27th chapter, right? Genesis 27. When, when Esau did finally get his blessing. Because Esau got a blessing, all right? At uh, Genesis 27 and 39, And Isaac his father answered and said unto him, Behold, thy dwelling shall be the fatness of the earth and the dew of heaven from above. So you're also going to have a world rulership, all right? And by thy sword shall thy live and shall serve thy brother, all right? And they served us under David. All right, they're uprooted from under Solomon. Okay, but you know, ultimately, uh, they're they're overall going to serve us forever in the kingdom. All right, well, for a thousand years for them. All right, but the nations and the heathen forever. And by thy sword shall thy live. So Esau, Edom, who we also known as Red. Okay, he's also associated with being blessed with a sword. You see, and 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 when you read here. Genesis 27 and 41 and Esau hated Jacob because of the blessing where his father blessed him and he said the days of my heart are at hand my father uh, Isaac is going to pass away and I'm going to slay my brother Jacob why because of the blessing that Jacob got and he's forever tried to cut you Israelites off from that blessing we can find instances of it in the kingdom Herod we just showed you a uh, uh, Herod uh, you go back to Haman you know, there's always been a, a struggle and a back and forth between these two nations of people. All right. The Edomites and the Israelites. OK. But again. All right. This red horse, this red dragon, this red man. All right. Esau Edom, who's associated with red. Right. Was given power to take peace from the earth. Let's read it again. Revelation six and four. And they went out another horse that was red. And power was given unto him that sat there to take peace from the earth. And this is what he does through offering you, uh, uh, you know, the uh, talking points of freedom and, you know, liberty and do as thou wilt. OK, ultimately, he's able to remove order from the earth, which then takes peace from the earth, then, which means people live with no uh, values, with no standard. This is what Esau Edom has brought to the earth. OK. His policies, his way of life, he, he's taken humanity in a, in a backwards, not forwards. OK, but you got an iPhone in your hand. So you thinking you're really in a kingdom. You think you're really forwarding, you're progressing. But look at the world around you. And that they should kill one another and everybody's at each other's throat. There's no peace. There's no order. Why? Because adultery is able to be forwarded. Wickedness is able to be forwarded without law and order. Things that harm people and things that make people angry and men, you know, react and women react in a certain way. Those things are not outlawed. They're uplifted. They're they're, uh, uh, you know, you know, uh, forwarded. These are suggestions. Uh, you know, it's in the music in a righteous system. None of this music would be able to forward itself in the earth. It would be stopped. All right. And the people that were responsible for trying to put it out and, 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 and you know, had the power to make it go forward, it would be stopped. And judged accordingly. You see? So he's taken peace from the earth. But as you can see here, there was given unto him a great sword. This is the red dragon. This is Esau Edom, who, who ultimately is ruling in the planet earth. And as we were, where we read, we, we quoted earlier, but 2nd Edger 6 and 9 says what? 2nd Edger 6. And nine, for Esau is the end of the world and Jacob is the beginning of it that followeth. You see, the earth has been given into the hand of the wicked, the red man. The Lord has allowed the most vile and wicked nation that he created. OK, for his purpose to rule the earth now. And now through our word, they've been identified. OK, let's get that in the book of Second Thessalonians. Right. OK, Second Thessalonians chapter two all right we'll get a few more and close it out so he's the red man cold red okay what, what, what is the uh 
the the last name of the Rothschild people mean? The name Rothschild, you hear about these elite ruling families who are living on a high horse. Well, they're, they're at the forefront of the blessing given to Esau, along with other Edomites. This is just one family. There's more. You better believe there's particular people we've never even heard of that, that have the, the, the power. But these are the, the, the banking families, how they keep the world all right, in disarray through debt. You know, <sighs> it says the name Rothschild comes from the German phrase. All right. Give me one second. All right. Zum rotten shield, it says, which means at the red shield. Why would the Heavenly Father, the, the, <laughs> the name refers to the house where the Rothschild family lived for generations, all right, in Frankfurt's Jewish ghetto. See? So they went from rags to riches, basically, which ghetto is associated with, you know, something, to, you know, a place, you know, places where the, the, the Jews would be when you look up that term, actually. All right, but at the Red Shield. So the red people... Pursuant to the Holy Scriptures, 2 Thessalonians 2 and, and 8. And then shall that wicked be revealed, whom the Lord shall consume with the spirit of his mouth. All right. Also in this book uh, I have called Who is Esau Edom? It says the Jewish Kabbalah red signifies bloodshed, also jo uh, justice for the use, the small hats. So the small hats have a lot going on that ties them and, and what they're doing to red, we just showed you the Rothschild family, their name means red shield. The Lord is identifying, all right, the warning through through the 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 the, the color. He, he put it all there for us to bring out to you people. This is the man that ultimately will be in rulership before our Lord came. These are the Edomites. OK. It says. The color of Jewish com uh, communism is red. All right. As indicated by such terms as red nation, red star, red square. All right. The Russian Russian revolution that brought about red communism was planned and financed by the Jewish. OK. And the revolutionary leaders all belong to the Jewish race. See. Amalek. OK. OK. Amalek, who would be the first of the nations. <laughs> red in the west has become a universal sign for warning or danger red edom communism has proven to be a danger all right to humanity all right the color red is predominantly associated with the use the small hats and their activities of that with esau edom but see all of you are edomites it's just that the amalekites will be at the forefront of your shit Second Thessalonians two and eight. And then shall that wicked be revealed whom the Lord shall consume with the spirit of his mouth and shall destroy with the brightness of his coming. Even him whose coming is after the working of Satan with all power and signs and lying wonders. See, and he's been able to use those lying wonders to hide the truth of the matter. All right. But ultimately, the Lord has put a dent in his plan by raising up the elect. OK, Revelation 11. And 11 and after three days and a half, the spirit of life from the heavenly father entered into them and they stood up on their feet and great fear fell on them with saw them. Why would great fear fall? All right. On these nations, because they're seeing just like Herod saw. <laughs> all right. When you when you when you go to Matthew, the second chapter, when Herod saw that chariot. Right. Matthew 2 and 2 saying, uh, Matthew 2 and 1, now when Yahweh was born in Bethlehem, and now we've been born here, all right, as the fourth beast is ruling, Yahweh was born while the fourth beast was ruling. We're just living in the revival of it, Rome. All right. It says, now when the when, the, when Yahweh was born in Bethlehem of Judea and the king of Herod, in the days of the king of Herod, there came wise men. All right. From uh, from the east to Jerusalem, saying, where is uh, where? Where is he that is born of the Jews? For we have seen this star in the east and have come to worship him. All right. Because a lot of these 
Israelites understood and a lot of people understood that the, the Messiah, what he represented, man. But Herod was like, oh, shit, I got to stop this. Well, that's where they at now. Because they, they know and understand what this represents, man. So the man of sin has been revealed. He's He's been identified with red. Okay. Uh, the, the banking industry, everything that we know, all right, is, is, re is ran pretty much by these Edomites. Okay. Which ultimately we showed you one of the main notable families. All right. That are at the forefront of their rulership and their dominance of the earth. It's called the red shield people. Why would the Lord put the spirit on them to do that? All right. Remember the king's heart is in the hand of the Lord. Okay. So he moved them to change their name from Bauer to red shield. All right. And have went around the planet earth doing all of this wickedness only in the latter days for us to bring out. No, this is the Edomites. He's the red guy. Let's see if I got anything else. I think that's the point. All right. Yep. Uh, yep. We'll finish off on uh, in the book of numbers. Matthew 24 and 20. And when he looked upon Amalek, who was Amalek? Okay. Who, who are the Amalekites? These are the people who are calling themselves, all right, J-E-W's today. Okay. And this was a nation of people we were always at odds at with in the scriptures. All right. Amalek, I Malak says a dweller in a valley. Descendants of Amalek, all right? And, you know, ultimately, when you go to uh, Genesis 36 and 12, and Timna was the concubine to Eliphaz, Esau's son, and she bare Eli to Eliphaz, Amalek. Now, when you understand inheritance rights amongst nations, how they deal in the ancient world is, if you were born to a concubine, you really didn't get the rights of those who were born to the, uh, just like uh, Hagar, and, and uh, uh, Sarah with Isaac, the child of the promise was 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 ultimately uh, Isaac, the child of the concubine. You know, the, ultimately they were told to, hey, y'all y'all get up out of here. They got a blessing though, but they they didn't get the blessing. So when you look at Amalek and the the control they have, the you know the 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 so-called Jews, the regular American Edomites, even in this book that I'm reading. They have a problem with them, all right? And they ultimately went through the thorough history to link them to Esau, only to them, but they're only helping us. But we're telling them all of you are Edomites, but they're at odds with them because they've hoarded the blessing. They've hoarded the blessing. Everything goes to them. You know, the, even their, their precious America, it gives all, it, it, most of its aid goes to them. All right? So uh, the, the, these other Edomites are mad at Amalek because he's basically hoarded the blessing and, and told everybody else to kiss my ass and hallelujah. <laughs> Numbers 24 and 20. And when he looked upon Amalek, he took up this parable and said, Amalek was the first of the nations, but his latter end shall be that he perished. And he's the first in the sense that he the first to attack us when we left Egypt. Showing you that this is our enemy. OK, but the first also in a sense. All right. The Hebrew word is Ra'ash. Okay, let's just get to the point, the root word. Head, top, summit, upper, chief, total. He will be ultimately ruling. That's why the scriptures say Esau is the end of the world. So Amalek would have the fatness of the earth in his hands. All right, but as we can just see here, his ladder, he's going to have the, he's going to be the head. He's going to be at the front. All right, the, 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 this wicked priesthood is dominating the earth which really they're the red people, but their latter end, all right, pursuant to this scripture, all right, is that they should perish. So Amalek would be on top, all right, and be winning, but his latter end is that he shall perish forever, all right? Shalom.